Sometimes we need to take a really close look at a very tiny portion of the waveform. Um, and of course we can expand this out quite a bit using the volts per division control. But say for example we wanted to look at a very tiny piece, something known as a spike or, or, or ringing. Uh, right here on the top of the waveform there is a very, very tiny spike. You can barely see it. Uh, it's sticking up right here on the top of the square wave. Let's say, for example, I want to take a, a close look at that. If I use the uh, seconds per division control and try to expand that out, at one point I'm going to make it so big that it's completely off the screen. Even if I use the horizontal position, it's gone. Actually, we can see a little bit of it over here. Um, so. Um, we can't expand the time base out anymore to take a, a, just a, a look at that spike without expanding it out so far that we don't see anything at all. There's a way that we can look at just a tiny portion of, of that waveform. Just in this case, let's say we're just interested in the spike. If you use the horizontal position control and line up the waveform so that what you want to look at in great detail is right on the center, then, in this oscilloscope, it's located right here in the center of the uh, seconds per division control, a control known as times 10. This may be a button that's located elsewhere in the oscilloscope. Uh, it may be some other kind of a control in your oscilloscope. Watch what happens when I pull out the times 10 knob. The sweep has expanded to 10 times its original size. Uh, for example, uh, right now the sweep is set on uh, five microseconds per division. When I pull out the times 10, we're now at 0.5 microseconds per division and we can get a, a better look at, at this little glitch here. Now it's somewhat ups, unstable and, and that's perfectly normal. When you start getting into very, very fast time settings, you can expect some uh, instability in the waveform. And don't forget, when you're done using the times 10 magnifier, remember, reset it back to its normal position. This same control acts like a variable knob, kind of in the same manner as we saw when we were looking at the vertical volts per division. Remember it, how it had also had a calibration knob um, right in the center. The horizontal sweep also has uh, a calibration control in the center and a detented, locked-in, calibrated position. Again, uh, there's almost no reason for you to take this out of its calibration position. And in fact, you can get in a lot of trouble, again, if you're trying to make periodic waveforms, uh, periodic waveform measurements, and you don't have the, uh, the horizontal sweep control in its calibrated position. So make sure that that's in its calibrated detent before you start making any periodic waveform measurements. Another really neat thing that the oscilloscope can do, remember the times 10 magnifier that we looked at before. We can pull this out and expand the, the sweep times 10. There's another really excellent way that you can do this, and it's called delayed sweep, B delayed sweep. Remember how the vertical circuits had, we had two, channel one and channel two. Well, there are also two sweeps or two horizontal time bases as well. One is called A and the other one's called B. This selector called horizontal mode selects whether you're using the A sweep or the B sweep. In fact, there's even a way that you can use both. When I flip this to the A alternate B position, I end up with the two sweeps. And th this particular oscilloscope does have another control called A and B sweep separation that I can use to separate the two. The position control moves them both up and down. The separation control moves the two. The sweep on the top is my normal A sweep. This is your normal sweep and it's a sweep that you use for 99.9% .9 of, of all the work that you do on the oscilloscope. When I flip it to A alternate B, it kicks in the B sweep and here's what we can do. The second per, seconds per division control is for A and B. If I pull this knob out and turn it, I'm speeding up the B sweep. And you can see the B sweep here on the bottom is moving faster than the A sweep. Not only can I select a faster sweep speed, but on the top I can see what part of the waveform I'm illuminating. 
Look, the B sweep is a little bit brighter. Watch as I increase the B sweep speed. I'm selecting a smaller piece of this waveform to look at. If I turn down the intensity, you can really see that what's illuminated here is what's down here on the B sweep. Not only that, I can select where on the A sweep I'm going to expand it. This control is known as the vernier. It's called a vernier. And what it really is is a multi-turn potentiometer. Watch what happens as I adjust the vernier control for the B delayed sweep. I can adjust where on the A waveform the B sweep uh, picks up and ends. Let me turn up the brightness a little bit more. Remember, that's what the waveform looks like. In fact, I can select a very small portion uh, for the B sweep and display that. Again, if I turn down the brightness, and I can adjust the intensity of the A sweep and the B sweep here with separate intensity controls. If I turn down the intensity of the A sweep, you can see what we're selecting with the vernier control is just this small part. And I can select a very, very small part of the waveform and examine it on the, on the B sweep. As we get faster and faster, um, uh, brightness becomes a problem. And so um, uh, sometimes you'll have to darken the room. In this case, for the sake of this video production, I have a lot of studio lights up here, and so that's kind of washing out the, the image. But if I shade it, you can, you can clearly see what we're looking at here. So again, you can select just the A sweep. You can select uh, just the B sweep, or you can select A, alternate B, and what that allows you to do is select which portion of the A sweep you're going to stretch out with the B sweep. The B delayed sweep allows you to look at a very, very tiny portion of a waveform and expand it out as large as you'd like to see it in greater detail. This is very handy when you're working with video because it enables you to pull out one individual line of video or even a single blanking or sync pulse and look at it separately from the rest of the signal. 